a lot of work put into it by everybody, academics, recruiting staff, coaches, uh, everybody involved. And, uh, you know, the city as a whole has a lot to sell. So I'm um, pretty excited about it. No questions, all right. Oh. <laughs> Coach, when you look at... Yeah, the focus ha has never changed. This program is about our players and our roster. Every kid I talk to in recruiting, every kid we bring in, it's about the people on our team. Same thing I tell our coaches. It's about the people who choose to be Sun Devils. So we're always going to keep it about those kids that are here. So we've been here every Friday uh, with the guys for uh, off-season conditioning already. Most staffs are on the road recruiting some days. We're, we didn't go out on the road every day recruiting. We stayed here with our guys because that's always been the focus. And then, Coach, when you look at, obviously, what you brought in, I mean, we look at the offensive lining, the plug, just your overall thoughts on the guys that came in in the trenches. Yeah, I mean, uh, this game is one up front. You know, you got to have big people that can move people. It's a, it's a pretty simple game. I mean, you want to move the ball forward, you have to probably move a person forward, right? So we want to get big people that can move people. Hey, Coach, Jordan Ham, Sports 360 AZ. Uh, in terms of Jaden's recruitment, um, you know, can you just kind of take us through the steps once you knew he was available and then what he can bring to the field? Yeah, I mean, obviously, Jaden and I have a relationship that goes far back, and uh, it's been a really natural and genuine relationship. You know, throughout his entire process, he would ask me questions, uh, even after he committed to uh, other institutions. Uh, and he would ask me questions, Coach, what do you think about this? And that was always just a uh, sounding board for him. I mean, that's really what our job is as coaches, is you're not going to get every kid. Uh, you're not supposed to get every kid, nor does it work out like that. And uh, my biggest thing is to keep relationships with these guys and be a sounding board for them. And uh, in this situation, you know, that came back to a situation where he, you know, got back on the market and there was a period of time for about a month I couldn't talk to him and then he got back on the market he hits me up hey coach and you know it just from there it just happened naturally because our relationship had always been natural genuine and I would continue that relationship even when I knew that or I thought I wasn't going to be able to coach him and uh, here we are today and what makes him so, just such a unique quarterback he's just a great person uh you know you get caught up in you know media's media y'all media, are part of the media so uh, you know, the narrative is the narrative is the narrative is what sells. And I think sometimes when you get caught up in a narrative that's fun to write about, you know, your name can get put in ways that it shouldn't. And this is a really, really good kid who wanted to be a, an Arizona State Sun Devil, whose dad played at Arizona State, who grew up wearing jerseys, who wrote his dad, drew a picture and gave it to his dad when he was eight years old of him playing uh, at Sun Devil Stadium. It was in pencil. He showed it to me. This is a kid who gets to live out his dream, and that's pretty special. Lena, then Michelle. Coach, Lena Washington, 12 News. In addition to all of these young men that you've brought on, you also had DJ Foster join your staff. What does his addition mean for this program? Well, he is living proof of concept. You know, we want to keep kids here. He's the proof that if you come here, you will be a legend. And it's funny because every kid walks in here, they go, oh, my gosh, that's DJ Foster. And, I, and all these Arizona kids, it's like, I know. That could be you. This is, the, this is proof of concept. The fact that you came in here and see DJ Foster and you feel some sort of way about DJ Foster is exactly how people can feel about you. No difference. You just got to make the choice to do it. So him having him here, not only is he a great person, a great leader, a great mentor for these kids, it's proof of concept of what we're trying to build here and how it can be done and how this place can help this state and the kids who are from this state who choose to stay in this state, I mean, for the rest of their lives. And you do have a lot of AZ kids on this list. What does that mean for you to keep them home or bring them back home? Well, it's great just because, you know, when you're born and raised here, one of the hardest things people people forget the human element of kids. They say, oh, well, you have a school right here. Why don't you just all come to Arizona State? That's not going to happen, right? Because when you're born and raised here and you're 17 years old, I've lived it, you don't understand how great of a place this is to live. You don't know what you don't know. And there's going to be some kids – who want to go experience something, they don't think it's, they think the other opportunity is better only because they don't know. 
And then they get there and they're like, holy cow, it's, uh, there's a lot of snow out here. Or holy cow, they didn't, they didn't tell me that it was going to be blank. This 48-hour visit that I took twice seemed like the dream, and now I'm here, and it's not sunny with mountains, with family, right, with a city with great food. It doesn't have all these things that you don't face those obstacles when you're on a place on a 48-hour visit. So having these kids back is just showing that this is a place that people want to be, right? You don't have to go turn over every rock to realize you want to be somewhere, you can say you want to be here and it's okay to be here. You don't have to have a reason. You don't have to have a why. I want to be here. That's my reason. Michelle Martin, Chris. Michelle Gardner, Arizona Republic. Coach, when it came to the transfer portal, it seemed like the first six, seven, eight you got were all local guys you brought back. And then you kind of supplemented it with guys that were not local. Can you kind of talk about your philosophy? Was it just kind of maybe easier to bring those guys back and then go get the other guys? Uh, that was more probably timing. Uh, so those guys obviously went in the portal, and then they were coming home for break. So when you come home for break, right, where are you going to come back? Home, right? You're like, wow, it's 68 degrees out. I'm in the portal. People I know are here. They want to bring people home. So those things just kind of happened naturally because this was their home, so it happened faster for them than the other kids. Uh, so I just think that was just ironic and just a product of us being local and the timing of the change. Mark? Competitive. I think you, I think you chose the right word. It's, uh, it's a group of people that are going to compete, but the goal is to compete to make each other better. That's really the ultimate goal is I tell people all the time, your goal should not be to play as a true freshman or say I want to play as a sophomore or I want to do blank as this. Your goal is to say when I leave here, am I the best I could possibly be? And if you leave a place the best you could be, then you're going to be more successful than you would have been if things were promised to you, handed to you, or if you didn't have the competition that pushed you. So sharing the vision and teaching our guys, this isn't about how quickly you can play. Right. This is about how can you grow, how can you be better, and then when you get your opportunity, you're better. Huh. Novel concept. So let's just work together, compete versus each other, right? And when you get your opportunity, you're going to be a better version of yourself. Chris, then down here, and then Robbie. Both accurate quarterbacks. That is a thing you can't – very hard to coach. I shouldn't say you can't because feet can help a little bit. Accurate. Smart, accurate, smart. You know, if you get accurate and smart guys, you can win a lot of football games. And both of those kids have those two qualities. Kind of moving on from what he said about Pine and the quarterback room in total. So you have three guys that could really be competing for the starting job. How do you anticipate that kind of position battle kind of playing out? Yeah, we have five guys who can really compete for the starting job, right? Every, I, I haven't seen any of these guys throw. And people will, you know, oh, that's just tongue-in-cheek. That's what you have to say as a coach. It's not. Everybody who steps foot on the field is going to get an opportunity because guess what? I'm in my dream job. I want to see the best player play because that's going to help me win and it's going to help me be here for 30 years. Uh, so what we're looking for, we're looking for guys to come in, have a mindset to learn, to grow, to listen. Right? Don't make the same mistake twice. That's it. Don't make the same mistake twice. And that includes somebody else's mistake. You might, you might not get the rep, but you heard me coach somebody else. Or you coach Coach Baldwin coach somebody else. Did you learn from that rep, and did you grow? And that's what we're looking for. Robbie and then Colin. Hey, Coach. Uh, Robbie with Fox 10. You uh, touched on the competitive nature of some of these position groups, but with the transfer portal and how much players are moving around nowadays, how important was it for you to identify players that embraced that competitive mindset and wanted to be here in some maybe crowded position groups? Yeah, it's essential. Uh, that was a question I asked every kid in our team. It's a question I asked every prospect uh, that we brought in was, do you want to be here? Like, <laughs> do you want to be here? It's very simple. And it, the reason for that is because we're going to push them. And it's not a trick. These kids didn't get tricked to come here. They didn't get promised playing time or promised anything other than an opportunity to be pushed to a level they've never been pushed but also understand that they're going to have a coach that has their back and an environment that you can have a lot of fun getting better. And that's, that's our culture. That's our environment here is you're going to have more fun than anybody in the country, working harder than anybody in the country. 
Kenny down here, sorry, sitting on the oh, seat. Oh, how are you doing? <laughs> Colin Harmon, ABC 15. Uh, with Jaden, I mean, and looking big picture for where you want to take this program, how significant of a domino is that um, just signaling to, you know, big time recruits across the country and landing him to get him to come here? Yeah, I think it just, that's a kid who's been through a lot. I think that just shows you that being happy still matters. And all these decisions, there's so many things that get thrown at these 16, 17-year-old kids, adults, handlers, professional recruiters that put all this stuff in kids' minds about why you can't go here, why you can't go there. At the end of the day, you got to show up and be happy somewhere because if you're not happy, right, you're not going to perform at your highest level of ability. That's simple. And he is showing people it's okay to go to a place – like this place who's building and be happy it's okay and now these other kids that are saying man they were three and nine last year yeah we were three and nine last year i, I got too many big offers to go there I, we were three and nine last year no you don't no you don't you can come here college football's best teams in the country because the best players in the country go there it's very very simple Culture, good players. The players choose where the good players go. So if you want to come here, if you want to stay home, if you want to move to paradise, you come here. Elite players are already doing it. You're not the first one. Come join it. Probably not much between. Uh, I mean, it'll it'll depend on post spring. I shouldn't say not much. It's just you never know. I think that's a – I couldn't give you a realistic answer there until after spring ball, but I feel, I feel like we filled a lot of needs. Uh, we got to get better always, but uh, we'll see where, you know, what's that saying, where the wind blows, right? Jordan? Coach, in terms of uh, Bram Walden, you recruited him in high school, you coached him at Oregon, now he's at Arizona State. Where have you seen him take that biggest step, and, and where can you see him continue to grow? Yeah, I mean, that's just – he's – Battled the injury bug a little bit, and to see him healthy, moving around, and smiling. You know, yeah, I know what I mean. I, I, I worked with him for a year, and I could count on one hand how many times he smiled. Like, this dude smiles. He's happy. He's happy to be home. He's got a sense of joy about himself. He's got a bounce in his step. And uh, that's the biggest room of growth he's had is the, the mentality that he's happy again. And I keep using that word because in college football, so many kids aren't happy because uh, they get caught up in this big business and this big profession. That's a kid who moved home. He's happy. You can see him move better. You can see him just feel better. And because of that, he's going to play better. Yeah, they're going to be essential to what we're trying to do. Uh, experience at those positions are crucial. And having experience at those positions is, is what we needed. Because at the end of the day, if you don't have a good O-line, right, one, you can't run the ball. Two, you can't throw the ball, right, which is pretty important. Three, you can't get the D-line better because they can't work. Four, you can't work pass rush or developing routes in team periods because you don't have time to throw the football. Everything has to be skelly. So when you really look at it, you have to have an offensive line in order to run productive practices that make the other 20, what, 27 guys in the field better. So it's an essential position to have the vets there. Tim and then Jake. Tim Healy, ASU Radio. Kenny, I was talking to Coach Ward just now, and he sounds very excited about the potential of the guys you brought in in the defensive front, especially at the edge position. Can you talk about those recruits and how you feel they can contribute? Yeah, we, we brought in quite a few. I think the, honestly, the, the culture and the type of player we're always trying to bring in there, and you can see that with all those guys, is they can affect the quarterback, right? Those are guys that are probably on the smaller side, all of them as opposed to the bigger side in this league at defensive end, right? They're twitchier. They're guys that can play up the field and rush the passer, right? This league, more than any league I've been in, is a quarterback-driven league, and because of that, Defense has to be played in more of a pro-style mindset. And when you play defense in a pro-style mindset, you have to stop the run on the way to the quarterback, right? It's not stop the run, then go sack the quarterback. It's sack the quarterback, and on your way to him, stop the run. And all of these guys have that 
that build, that athleticism, and they have that swagger about themselves to go sack the football. Just honesty, ask them direct questions. You know, I'm a very, very direct person, right? And that's just who I am. I just, do you want to be here? Are you ready to work hard? I, do you understand that you have nothing guaranteed with coming here? Like, people always think you get in with these guys and you, you hype them up and you make them feel good when they leave a meeting. No, you leave a meeting with me and you're going to be put into reality of what this actually looks like when you show up. Because we're Arizona State. We're going to get players who want to be here. That is going to happen, right? Is it going to be you? Well, that's depending on how bad you want to be here, right? So I would just say honesty and being direct. And I think that's how I am with our current players. That's how I am with the staff. There's really no sugarcoating things. It is what it is. If you don't like what it is, change it. Pretty simple. Adversity, response, you know, we're going to put these guys in positions to fail on a consistent basis, and we want to see how they respond, right? We want to see how they respond again and again. We want to put them in situations where they're successful. How do you respond? Because it's easy, easy, easy to be successful and respond poorly. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for how this team meshes are basically our competitive nature. Do we compete? If you lose a rep, do you hop your butt back up? Or do you just go to the back of the line? Like, do you have a passion about yourself to win? Like, the goal of the game is to win. So what is our competitive nature that we're going to be? And how do you respond when things go your way? And how do you respond when they don't? That's what I'm looking for. Yes, it is going to happen. So, going to Camp T. Are we excited? I would believe so. I don't see why not. Right, that, that's uh, Where's Coach Butterfield? That would be Coach Butterfield's decision. <laughs> Yeah, a game day atmosphere. It's going to be fun. We're going to create a fun environment that's engaging to people that are there. You're going to want to be there, right? I have a few things that we're not going to say what we're going to do, but you're going to want to be there. If you're a, if you're a student, you definitely want to be there. If you're a fan with little kids, you want to be there. If you're an adult that just ran patch run, you want to be there. You want to be there, point blank. For me, I need you there, right? If we want to win at a high level, we're going to have prospects there. In order for us to show that we're invested at a level that we're competing to recruit these kids against, we have, they have to see it. I can tell people that we're activating the Valley. Great. Sounds really good as a hashtag, right? Unless people show up, we have an activated crap, right? So how do we do that? Show up. I don't care if you're one person coming by yourself. It matters. You matter. The one person matters that says, oh, it's just me. No, you matter. Because if 20,000 just you show up, right, we're going to have 45,000 people there. If 20,000 people say, oh, it's just me, right, then we're going to have four. That was bad math, right? But you all get what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I would say everybody has a plan for how you install it. Great coaches change that plan based off who you're coaching. So we're doing meetings right now, and we'll work, you know, all day on how we're going to install this, right? And probably 60% of it will be different, right? Because once we get in front of the kids and we coach it and we say, okay, well, we're, this group is struggling with this. We need to slow this down and install it two days later. I would like to say in spring ball is for teaching football, Right, so football is, you have the new systems. Those are languages, right? Rosetta Stone, right? We're Rosetta Stone right now. We're going to teach you zone is called, right, whatever chair, right? And that means everybody's going to zone step to the right. But if we go rolling chair, it's outside zone, right? Whatever that is, right? 
I want to teach kids football and spring ball. What is a third drop? How do you middle correctly versus four verticals? Versus zone with a wide linebacker, how is that going to change our double team? Is it? Right? Why is it going to change that? Is it going to change your landmark? So I'm going to be more focused on teaching kids football than installing our new version of Rosetta Stone. Rosetta Stone, you can go to NIL Collective if you're interested. 